Buenos dias from Lima, Peru. I'm Alicia. And I'm Nate. We've been traveling the world for the last year and a half and recently made our way into our 12th country of Peru. We visited Machu Picchu and saw the beautiful Cusco area. And now we're in Lima, the gastronomical capital of South America. And that means we're on a food tour. First stop is coffee and breakfast. And while Michelin doesn't technically have a guide here in Peru, they did have a blog post with some of their top recommendations. La Penitereria Borenco was at the top of that list for breakfast because of their delicious pastries. <laughs> I got a bear. There's a bear on my cappuccino. It's so cute. How do I do this? A bear? I don't get it. This place is most well known for its chocolate croissants and it's very tart. So we're starting with a berry tart and it is warm and flaky and I couldn't even pick it up because it just started falling apart. Mm. Oh my god. <laughs> It's like lemony and flaky and so warm. It is amazing. We couldn't come here and not get the chocolate croissant, so here we go. Oh my gosh. It's like, it's like so flaky and just falling apart. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Was that really how you're supposed to do <laughs> Alright, you can show me how it's done. I think you're supposed to pull croissants apart. I love the apple approach. Way more my style, and I thought I'd be the one to do that. But uh, maybe that's the luxury of going second, is you kind of get to see how it goes. Yeah. Holy crap, that's really good. Look at this, like look at the mess it makes. I feel like that's a sign of a good croissant, as if it makes a complete mess when you eat it. Mission accomplished. Since we are going to be eating a ton of food today, we're trying to get our steps in, and we made our way over to the Barranco neighborhood, which is well known for its amazing street art. Next up is the Bridge of Size. This bridge just behind me has an urban legend around it. If you can cross the bridge in under 30 seconds, holding your breath the entire way, you can make a wish and it'll come true. It only works on the first time you cross it though, and this is our first time here, so we're going to attempt to do so. I have some questions. First, do we have to make our wish before we go on the bridge or while we're holding our breath and walking on the bridge? While we're holding our breath. Second, if you pass out, does it still count? <laughs> no. Okay. I also think a very important tactic is that you give yourself a break after walking up this hill, mm -hmm. which we just did. Yes. I'm ready. I'm so nervous. <laughs> like, I feel like my breath is shortening because I'm so nervous. We got five, four, three, two, one. <sighs> We did it in under 20 seconds. <laughs> Obviously the wish is most important, but it'd be really cool if there were people cheering after we did this. <laughs> Nobody clapped or did anything. So I'm proud of us still. Good job. Mwah. There is so much traffic in Lima. We've had to give ourselves a lot of time to get from place to place. And the horns here are ridiculous. 
the post I read said that we should be here at 11.30, so we showed up just a little bit earlier than that to get all our shots ahead of time. Turns out they don't open until 12, and we are here 45 minutes early. Luckily, he let us sit at one of the tables so we can wait here. <laughs> Order your fish, you'll actually come inside and look at this giant ice block with all the fish for the day. Once they run out of fish, they are sold out. You just pick your fish and then they'll cut it up and make all the dishes that you choose. Oh my gosh, I love ready? this place. I love to use every part of the fish. First up is our ceviche, which is the national dish of Peru. It's a raw fish in a lime juice marinade, which cooks the fish so it's edible. It's absolutely delicious. All of the ceviche we had in Peru is amazing, but we've heard really good things about this one in particular. And since this restaurant is so sustainable, they actually fry the fish skin into appetizers. Mmm. So the fish skin is a little fishy. It tastes kind of like calamari, but dipped in that lime juice is amazing. You always have to use a spoon when you eat ceviche because it gets all the juices in there and you don't miss out on them if you were eating it with a fork. In the US, we're used to eating it with chips though. So it's been a learning curve for us to eat it with a spoon. Mm. The marinade is called leche de tigre, which is tiger's milk. It's a lime marinade with garlic and spices and it is amazing. It is a little spicy and this fish is so fresh. The plate of ceviche is massive. It's the size of like three of my heads. Probably four, I have a small head. But... <laughs> but there's a reason for it. Ceviche in Peru is completely a shared plate. You would never order this alone, so that's why there's so much of it. Okay. We already have our second dish, which is a garlic fish. Um, it, it came with the head and the tail, and I'm pretty sure there's bones inside as well. So, you know, if you've seen us try and eat fish before, this isn't our favorite thing to do, but I think it's gonna be worth it for this fish. Mmm. That is so good. So the fish we ordered is in the tuna family, even though it's a white fish, not a red fish like the tuna is. It's so flaky and just melts in your mouth with all this garlic butter on top. It's really good. Mmm. Okay, now I have to dig in because we have a ton of food to eat. So much. Way more than we were expecting. 1.6 kilogram fish. Probably too much for two people for lunch. Our final dish is coming. It's the soup and they prepare it with the bones of the fish. Like we've said, massively sustainable. But in the meantime, we needed some water. And we got this. Does this not look like a bottle of vodka? This is the craziest bottle of water I've ever seen. It also makes me worry about what our bill is going to be. Because this is really nice. This is not like a plastic bottle. Oh my gosh, hold on. With the bones, we make us wonderful gracias. It came in a bucket. <laughs> we have so much more food to eat. Oh my gosh. That's why we don't have any bones in our meal. That makes sense. We're getting most of this to go because honestly we are stuffed and we have to be out of here for the next reservation in about 10 minutes. So we're just going to try a little bit of this soup. It smells amazing. It has fresh tomatoes and green onions and red onions in it. And then the whole bone of the fish is just down at the bottom. Oh my gosh. It's so garlicky and delicious. It's rich in flavor with those bones in there. Moment of truth. It was 250 soles. <laughs> Gracias.
This is John F. Kennedy. Probably the last statue I expected to see here in Lima, Peru, but they dedicated this entire park to commemorate the 50th anniversary of his death. And it's beautiful. There's flower arrangements everywhere. There's a huge park in the middle that kids are going crazy in. The birds are chirping everywhere. It's a wonderful place to be. And there's also food stalls. And there's one in particular we're looking for. The problem is they all look exactly the same. I found her! It only took four or five stalls. Here it is. We have picarones and it is deep fried sweet potato and squash, which is just how I like my vegetables especially when they're in the shape of a donut, that helps. And uh, you dip it in syrup, and the bees love it, so you have to eat fast. Probably have a whole swarm coming. It tastes like French toast to me. It's very good. Oh my gosh, it's delicious. <laughs> wow. Babe. Mm. Oh, good. <laughs> mm, this is so good. It tastes like something you would get at the fair. Just fried whatever. With syrup though. And the fact that it came in like a little red booth, it was like we were at the circus or something. I know, I kind of solidified it. So it was very interesting. I don't know why or how, but there are cats everywhere in this place. It is time for dinner and we are heading to a really cool spot called Mercado 28. It's an upstairs market with 18 different vendors similar to the market we went to in Colombia. Today we're getting some traditional Peruvian food and also a couple little surprises. different than what we normally order and both times Nate gets the draft and I get the bottle. It's kind of disappointing. <laughs> what did you get me? I got him an IPA. Our waitress brought it and she said that this is the IPA instead of IPA. I'm gonna say it now. I like it. IPA. Our first dish is lomo saltado, which is a beef stir fry with peppers, onions, potatoes, and rice. And this one smells so good. Mmm. Mmm. This one is really good with the soy sauce and cilantro flavors coming through a lot, but the one that we had in Cusco was way better. <laughs> I think the quality of meat there was a little bit higher than the market one that we're having now, but still very good. I don't know why I got this dish. I am by far and away the meat eater of the two of us, but I got Casa de... Casa. Casa de Lesquinos. Lingostinos. So close. But I got Casa de Lingostinos. Yeah! I did it. It has a potato casserole on the bottom, seafood topping, and with most Peruvian dishes that we've seen, there's always onions involved. So there's like red onions right on top, but I don't mind it, it always pairs well. There's avocado too, I love avocado. This is reasonable, right? It's really good. It has like a citrus type flavor, but it definitely has that like casserole feel. It tastes like a potato, Potato salad. It tastes kind of like potato salad. We were 
able to try two of the main dishes you have to try when you come to Peru, Lomo Saltada and Casa. And now we're gonna end the night with a dessert and a nightcap. We got gelato from Blue with Incan mints and chocolate chips. Look at this giant chocolate chip. That is like not even a chip anymore. That's just the chocolate. So it's mint chocolate chip basically, but it tastes so different. It's like an Incan mint and it's gelato and it's super creamy and delicious. Mm. This makes me happy. Oh, I was so cold. <laughs> oh my hoover. Ow. Wow, it really hurt. <laughs> We are in the hunt for the signature drink here in Peru, but it's Friday, it's getting late, and we don't have reservations. So we have four bars in mind, and basically it's plan A, B, C, and D. So hopefully we get there early enough and they'll let us in. Aki? Yeah. Hola. I'll go around. Okay. We were able to grab a bar top table here just for drinks and we're going to order the We got the famous Pisco Sour from one of the best restaurants you can get it from. Pisco Sour is made with Pisco liqueur which is native to Peru along with lemon juice, simple sugar, egg white wash on top, and bitters for the orange dot. <laughs> Cheers! These are Nate's favorite because they're so sour. This one is really, really sour. Very good. You okay? <laughs> so sour. Fun fact before we close out is that limes aren't even native to Peru. They were brought in by the Spanish in like the 1600s and now it's in everything. That was cool. I like that. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button below and if you want to stamp your passports with us again. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you guys in our next video for a full tour of... Oh my god. <laughs> We are trying to get some of our... What am I saying? God, it's all wrong. I'm just kidding, you did a great job. Thanks. You're welcome. Scene gas. I wish Alicia came that way. <laughs> did you see that walk? And then, what do you recommend uh, of these three? Oh. <laughs> Hot is in Atlanta. First of all, Havana. You probably can't hear anything I'm saying because there's a honking fest outside. Oh. Anniversary. Okay. People. called Mercado, called Mercado <laughs> <laughs> 28. Oh my God.